Hi everybody, Keith Tanner here from Flying Miata and today I'm going to be talking about brake systems. How you can choose which one's the right, best one for your car, what the various options that we offer are, and why you might, why you want, might want to upgrade your brakes in the first place. All sorts of brake related questions. So before we get started, if you have any questions during this broadcast, feel free to throw them in the comments. We will do our best to answer them live. If you are watching this in the future on YouTube or something like that, well, a YouTube recorded video, uh, put them in the comments. We'll answer them anyway. We do read all the comments. So please, if you do have questions, throw them in there. And of course, if you like this kind of content, don't forget to like and subscribe our channel because that allows us to keep doing more of this kind of thing. So it's one of the reasons we do what we do. So before we get to brakes, I have an update. For those of you who are waiting for the NC turbo system, one of the prototypes is parked behind me. One of the prototypes is parked out in the parking lot. We have a new piece showed up today. This is pretty Ah, nice little, just an example of some of the detail stuff you got to work on when you're doing a kit like this. This is a custom uh, turbo coolant line that's got the various fittings on it so it just drops right into place and works around a special little kink in the, uh, in the valve cover, all sorts of cool stuff. Anyway, work on that is progressing. It's not the big super sexy stuff is like, hey, we have boost, but this is the stuff that makes it work for years. So, brake systems. I've done a bunch of videos on this channel in the past talking about all sorts of details on the brake system. We've talked about calipers, we've talked about rotors, we've talked about the fluid. I think Mike has talked about brake lines. So if you want to know very specific details on things like caliper sizing, we have videos for that already. Um, what I'm gonna be talking about today is basically the brake kits that Fly Miata offers, what sets them apart, what makes them different, and what one might be best for your sort of use case. Um, now, one thing to know when I start talking is that the NC kits we offer are a little different than the NA, NB, and ND ones. So I will start off talking about those generations, and I will talk about the NC one sort of as a secondary, you know, once we've got the basics down, I'll talk about the NC one as well. So we will cover all the platforms, but uh, they are, there is a little more difference between the NC platform and the others for various reasons. So the first question is why might you want to upgrade your brakes? And, you know, upgrade or modify, because it's not necessarily the same thing. You can make a car worse by upgrading things. Um, the main reason you're going to want to do it, that you want to do it, is increased heat capacity. Ability to deal with a lot more kinetic energy basically being turned into heat. Basically a fast car on the track, car being driven very hard. Um, heavier car, although not as much fast is more important than heavy. Uh, but that's the biggest reason you want to do it, is just you want to be able to handle the heat loads of extremely hard use. Um, you also might want the increased brake torque, which basically means for a given amount of force on the, on the pedal, you get more deceleration, more braking torque at the wheels. Always feels good. Um, you might want easier pad changes, because that's one, one advantage to a lot of these wheelwood calipers that we're using here. Um, you might want better pedal feel, which is something that you get from a stiff caliper. Um, from a well-specified caliper, you might have a nice, nice firm pedal. That always feels better when you're coming into a braking zone, knowing there's something underneath your foot instead of a big mush. Uh, and lighter weight is actually a nice side effect sometimes as well. So I'm going to go through the various options that we offer and talk about what each of them, how they, how they affect that, I guess, how they, how they come into these various parameters. Now, before I get into that, one of the questions we get a lot of is what's a good brake kit for a car that is mostly street driven but sees the occasional track day? And for that sort of thing, you have to build your brake system for that occasional track day because at that point, you're gonna be using your braking system at full capacity. It doesn't matter if 364 days of the year, you're just commuting to work. On the one day when you need to be on the track, you need to have track capable brakes. So the fact that you only go to the track once in a while doesn't necessarily mean you need a lesser brake system unless you're willing to drive around it. You know, it is possible to drive on track with a system that's not fully specified for the track, but you are going to have to be easier on the brakes. You're gonna to have to lift and coast a little more maybe take a couple of slower laps, let it cool down. You have to drive around the brakes. So just be aware of that. Um, the fact you only do one or two track days a year doesn't really make a difference on those one or two days. All right, so we get a lot of questions about very specific applications. People want to know what will fit their car. And we have an entire team of technically trained customer service reps who will be happy to answer those questions for you. So feel free to reach out to us with details of how you're planning on using the car, what's on the car, that sort of thing, we'd be happy to help you choose the correct one for your application. So, we'll start off with our, what we call our stage one kit. We, we break our, our kits down into stages. 
Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about their specifications and their, their older names than stages because the stages vary from platform to platform, from chassis to chassis. But um, the stage one kit in all cases is basically just an optimized stock system. I don't have one here. It's basically just a set of new rotors, a set of new pads, a set of new lines, and new fluid. It basically allows you to bring your stock system a little bit OEM plus, shall we say, into slightly better than stock condition. Most of that's due to the pads, but also to refresh a tired system. So that's our stage one, is basically just making the best out of what you have. That's obviously the most affordable. It's the one that has the fewest fitment problems because of course it fits everything. Uh, it's the easiest one to do. I mean, that's the, uh, it's a good way to start. And for, a, for a, a street car, that's often all you need. The next one we have is what we call the little big brake kit. And this is a concept we came up with a while ago that basically maximizes the use of some of the parts, but not all of the parts. Where's my little brake? Here's a little big brake kit. And what this is is a stock rotor with a Willwood Powerlite caliper attached to it. What this gets you is stock diameter, so you don't have to worry about, about wheel sizes, that sort of thing. Um, you, your rotors, you can reuse the ones you have, so it keeps the cost down. It also makes it easier to buy inexpensive replacements if you want to. But it gives you a nice stiff caliper, so very good pedal feel, and it gives you good um, weight loss as well because this is a very lightweight caliper. So on the ND, for example, if you go with our four-wheel little big brake kit, which basically changes out the caliper on all four wheels, you'll save 18 pounds compared to stock. Um, over, and that's unsprung mass as well. So go back to my video about unsprung mass, you'll know why that's important. So that's the little big brake kit. It's a great concept um, in terms of being able to get yourself some upgraded brakes without having to go all the way to dual or to uh, multi-piece rotors, that sort of thing. Um, I like it so much I even built a set for my Volkswagen van. So there you go. The little big brake kit. And this is a case where the NC is a little different. I'll talk about the NC when, um, well the NC one Basically, it has larger rotors to begin with, and so we went with a slightly bigger caliper, and it's sort of halfway between a big brake kit and a little big brake kit. But basically, it's got a bigger, it's got a bigger caliper, and it uses bigger rotors from the factory. Anyway, that's the, uh, that's the NC difference. We also have a rear little big brake kit, which is what's over here, and that is a stock rear rotor with a power light caliper on it that, I believe this is optional, can or cannot have a parking brake um, connection on it. Do we still offer the uh, non-parking brake version? <laughs> I should have checked our catalog before we did this. Um, anyhow, there is a parking brake option available. It's not a super strong parking brake because of the way it works. It's kind of like an old uh, cantilevered mountain bike um, caliper. It's enough that it'll hold the car on a very slight gradient. Um, it'll, it'll meet, say, autocross um, requirements in terms of you do have a parking brake on the car, but you're not going to be do initiating drifts on this thing. So this is a really good autocross setup because it knocks so much weight off your car. Uh, it also is very easy to change the, the pads. So if you are going to the track or if you're going to the autocross, you want some super grippy pads for the autocross, even if they're a little noisy, and then you put your street pads back in for when you're driving on the street. Uh, you've got all those advantages, plus of course that nice stiff caliper, which translates to a very comfortable, reassuring stiff pedal. Do you have any questions over there yet? We do have a question. <laughs> the first question is, what is my opinion of brake booster deletes? And for that one, I'm going to refer you to one of my other videos where I was talking, I think I talked about brake boosters, actually, um, or calipers, but um, bad idea. Don't do it. Anyway, yeah, brake boosters are, are there for a reason. Uh, so that's our little big brake kit. Um, because we actually use the rear of this little big brake kit on a lot of our other, of our other kits as well. So I'll, you'll be seeing this one over and over again. So the next one is a big brake kit, obviously. And one thing about these kits that we, that we sell is these are not, they all use Willwood calipers, but they are not Willwood designed kits. These are not ones that you can pick up at Summit for $600 or something like this. Um, those ones tend to be decontented very, very extremely. Um, they don't, and they tend to use the least expensive, the lowest quality of whatever the options are out there. So our big brake kit, for example, um, this is a two-piece rotor. So it's lighter, it gives the advantage of two-piece rotors. Again, I did a video on that one a while back. Um, it uses a larger Dyna Pro caliper, um, which it ha still has piston sizes designed to work with stock master cylinders. You don't need to mess with your master cylinder on this one. Um, but it is, a, it is a bigger pad, it has more heat capacity. 
Uh, we have available bridge bolts, which is a, a bolt that goes in the middle here that makes it a little bit stiffer. I would pick this up and show it to you, but I can't because they're bolted together. Um, so this is the classic big brake kit. It's, uh, it's better at handling extreme heat. Uh, there's that bridge bolt right there, if you can see that. So that's an option on the kit. Um, it's better at handling uh, high heat levels than the little big brake kit. So it's a better choice for a track car. If you're running a turbo track car, this is more the sort of thing you want to do. Or if you're running a track car where you tend to run it at, at a track that has a lot of very hard braking on it, for example, you might want to go with this. I have tracked cars. I've even tracked a turbo car with this, but I did have to keep in mind that I was running the smaller brakes. Um, for a more dedicated track car, a more hardcore track car, when you don't want to drive around, you can run the big brake kit. So the advantage there is this two-piece rotor is larger in diameter. Um, it's a little bit lighter because than, uh, than you would expect for the diameter because of that two-piece construction in the aluminum center hat. And again, it's got the advantage of being able to swap the, um, the pads in and out easily. Now, differences between these and say the generic ones you might be able to buy from Wheelwood, we specify a higher quality rotor. This is used as a different metallurgy. Depends on which generation we're talking about as to which rotor it is, but we do, up, we do, um, we do use a higher quality rotor. Made in the USA, interesting. Um, than you find in the base model kits. And also we use the Dyna Pro caliper instead of the Dyna Lite. The Dyna Lite is less expensive, but it is also more flexible. And so we like the, uh, the stiffness means, again, a better pedal. You don't want a spring rate in your brake system. Um, so this gives us a better, better pedal feel and makes it for a better stopping car overall. And these are also paired with that, that uh, Willwood rear as an option as well for a four wheel kit. Because one of the things that's important is you want to make sure that your brake balance stays appropriate. Uh, your, and again, I've talked about this, I think in the physics of braking, I've talked a lot about brakes on this channel. Um, you will, you can't just increase your braking torque at one end of the car and not address the other. You may end up actually increasing your brake distances if you do that. Um, you have to keep them balanced, which is why we offer uh, proportioning valve upgrades as a, along with these brake kits where applicable. The NAs and the early NBs um, can do that. You can make sure that the balance stays the same. Starting in 2001, the ABS equipped cars had electronic brake proportioning. They take care of it themselves and all the NCs and laters have that as well. So where applicable, we offer the proportioning valves as an upgrade because it really makes the brake system work as well as possible. So the next level after this, oh, and these, uh, these also fit under 15 inch wheels. One of the reasons we use the rotor size we do, 11 inch rotor on the first two generations, um, they fit under 15 inch wheels on those. Um, you can actually use 15 inch wheels on an ND with this brake kit as well, which is kind of fun. The next step up is the big mama jama, we call it, or as we were joking around earlier, we should call it the biggest brake kit. And this is basically, it's a six piston Dyna Pro caliper. Lots and lots of meat in that pad right there. Um, on the ND, we also match it with a rotor that's nearly 13 inches in diameter. On the NA and NB, in order to fit inside 15 inch wheels, we keep it 11 inches but you've got that great big pad in there that helps it really deal with high heat. This is what I run on my V8 track car. Uh, and at our local, one of our local tracks, High Plains Raceway, extremely hard on brakes. Um, these are able to keep up, especially with some good ducting on there. I did a video on ducting as well. I talk about brakes all the time, you'd think. Anyway, I'd just be glad you don't live in my house, always talking about brakes. These ones are a little harder to change the pads on because there's, it doesn't have a removable bridge bolt. It's got this great big casting right down the middle. It's the price you pay for these, but the advantages to a lot of these is it's still relatively easy to change pads. And also there's an enormous variety of pads available. You don't just have to deal with whatever's available for whatever brake system you came, uh, your car came with from the factory. Every brake manufacturer makes a Willwood application so you can get whatever brake, um, brake pad compound you want for your car. And they're, because they're easy to change, you can change your brake pads for the track, put your street ones back in, so that you can actually stop when you're on the street and you're not making all sorts of squealing noises and you can stop when you're on the track when things get hot. Okay. So most of our questions we had so far were things like, what's your recommended car for a Miata that sees autocross and occasional track days? Um, we covered the track day thing. You have to build for the worst case. Same with cooling, uh, same sort of thing. Uh, what would you use for a car, street car that only sees ex occasional spirited driving? And that's a situation where you can either go with our stage one kit, which is just the OEM plus, take all the stock components and make them work as well as possible. Or you do something like the little big brake kit because you really like the feel of that 
of those stiff, stiff calipers, um, which, I mean, especially on the ND, it feels fantastic. And I guess I should probably also talk about these other ones here too, shouldn't I? Um, I mentioned that the, uh, that the parking brake is not superb on this little setup. It's functional to a level. Um, so that's why we came up with these, these dual piston, or these dual caliper setups. Uh, this one runs like a normal parking brake in terms of it's got a, it's got a, it's cable actuated. Uh, it's basically, it uses that Willwood power light um, caliper in the back with all the quick pad changes and everything like this, but adds what's called a spot caliper, which is basically just here to do the parking brake. And it's completely mechanical, it's not hydraulic. So this is like a stock one. And as you can see, it packages anything that will fit over our little big brake kit, any wheel fit will also fit over this as well. So this is this has proven to be a nice upgrade. Um, it was prompted by one of our in-house racers who needed it for his hill climb, dirt hill climb <laughs> rally Miata. So he needed the handbrake that worked better. So this is where this development came from. And there's also this version, which uses a hydraulic secondary handbrake. And this is your drift version. This will allow you to install a hydraulic um, lever in the car and use this to initiate drifts. You can't use it as a parking brake unless you put a line lock in there. Um, but this is the one, if you want a drift set up, this will give you the nice Willwood um, caliper in the back, the power light in the back again, but also give you this little spot one that gives you a nice, strong initiation of your drifts. Um, very fun setup. I don't think there's anything else like this on the market. These two are only available for the NA and the NB, uh, reason being that we have not found a way to package them on the ND yet. Um, it may be possible in the NC. We haven't, uh, we haven't worked on that one yet, but... Um, yeah, unfortunately for the ND at the moment, we have not figured out how to mount both of these calipers. That multi-link suspension in the rear means there's a whole bunch more stuff going on back here. And we're, we're having a hard time finding a place to put two calipers, especially one that's got a great big cable attached to the back of it. Now the NC, I said, is a little different. It's sort of a hybrid. We use the stock rotors on that one, on the front, but they're 11 inches in diameter, same as this. So we basically use the stock rotors and we put this Dynapro caliper on it. And I think we also have the six piston version as well. So that gives you the advantages of the Willwood caliper, a bigger one than this, um, but without the expense of having to go for special custom rotors. In the back, we used another a, a rotor from another Mazda. It's a single piece solid rotor like this one. It's 11 and a half inches in diameter, I think. Um, but it uses the power light uh, caliper in the back. The reason for that was packaging. We needed to move it out a little bit further to, again to get rid of, to get around all that multi-link in the back. But we do have a, on our NC, if you look on our site, you'll see that there is a rear option for those as well with a very slightly different, slightly bigger rotor. And because it's off another factory Mazda part, it's easy to get replacements if we need it as well. It's, Mazda, it's a Mazda 5. So who knew performance Miatas run Mazda 5 parts. Uh, I hear a bunch of whispering over there. I'm sure we have more questions. We have no more questions? Okay, what else do I have here? Uh, one of the questions is, do you have to upgrade brake fluid if you upgrade your calipers? I did a whole video on brake fluid. Um, the answer is no, but you want to run good fluid. I mean, no matter what, you want to be running good fluid. If the intent is to be running on the track, for example, and you're putting on a big brake kit because you're expecting a lot of heat, you do need a brake fluid that matches that as well. So the brake fluid upgrade is not required by the calipers, but the sort of thing that will make you upgrade your calipers and your brake system is probably also going to make you upgrade your brake, your, your brake fluid. The good news is when you change out your calipers, you're going to have to flush the system anyway, so might as well flush it with good new fluid. Um, we sell a 660 degree uh, fluid that'll hold up to pretty much everything, including a 500 horsepower track me out on sticky tires, so that's the way to go. So one of the questions in here is, do I need to get a full four-wheel kit or will upgrading the front calipers and rotors be enough? It depends on what enough is. The fronts do most of the work. That's where all of the heat's going just because of the weight transfer going on there. The fronts are the ones that really get worked the hardest. So if you are gonna upgrade just one end, obviously the front is the end to do. But you have to make sure you don't mess with your proportioning. You do have to make sure you're still getting enough brake torque to the rear wheels that you're using them properly. Um, because otherwise you're gonna end up with the front wheels locking early. You won't get the actual braking force you're looking for. You'll be able to deal with the heat, but your single stop distance will likely go up. So you do want to make sure your, your proportioning is handled either by installing an adjustable proportioning, proportioning valve on the earlier cars or making sure that you've got appropriate matching um, calipers and or pads in the back. And we also have good questions about very specific things. What kit fits an NA6 stock wheel? What will fit an RPF1 14 by 7 ET19? 
That's why we offer break templates on our website. We have templates for every single one of these that you can print out. I did a video on this, believe it or not, um, about two years ago. Uh, we have templates that you can print out and actually hold up to your wheel that show the cross section of this brake system and they will tell you if they clear your wheel or if you need to run some, some spacers on that. The, uh, it's interesting, it's not always diameter. Sometimes it's the shape of the spoke. The Enki RPF1 in particular is a very hard wheel to get brakes under because it's got those big fat spokes, there's not a lot of room behind them. So you might actually have more trouble fitting a brake under those wheels than you would under something else. Uh, the Fly Me Out of Kojeki wheels, Kojeki, I always forget which one it is. Um, those ones actually have ridiculous amounts of brake clearance. Um, so you can fit pretty much any brake system under them because they have an enormous amount of room behind the spokes. Now the NA6 wheel that was asking about the daisies, uh, that's another wheel that is hard to fit underneath, um, again, because of the spoke shape. So I don't think we have a brake system that will just fit underneath those without spacers. Again, those spokes are very, very close to the hub, so they end up hitting the face of the caliper. That's the one downside to these, these multi-piston calipers, four here, four here, six there, is that you've got pistons on both sides, and so they do stick out a little bit further, and that's where the interference comes in in place of things like the RPF1 and things like the, uh, the NA6 Daisy wheel. So the answer is, if you already have the wheel, check your templates. If you don't already have the wheel, um, ask the vendor, and we can actually reach out, say if it's a tire rack wheel, we can often reach out to them and say, hey, here's a template, can you check if this will fit this particular wheel? They can often check that sort of thing for us. We do not have a list on our website of every wheel that fits because there's new wheels coming down the pipe all the time. And of course, we think you should buy our wheels, which we know will fit. So that's an easy answer right there. Uh, do we have any more questions over there, Nick? I think he's playing Tetris. We've lost him. Yeah, Candy Crush, whatever the kids play now, I can't keep track. So hopefully that's, uh, that covers all of your questions. It runs down all of the various options that we, that we offer. Basically, it's a stage system that becomes more and more, I guess, aggressive in terms of what it can handle in terms of heat, what it can handle in terms of uh, well, heat. <laughs> it's all it comes down to in terms of hard use, um, but the expense of, of more cost and possibly a little more difficulty in maintenance because of things like that enormous bridge bolt on the 6A caliper that's over here, the Dynapro. So if you have more questions, please do put them in the comments. We will answer them in the future. If you like this kind of content, make sure to like our, our channel, make sure to subscribe to our channel. You'll find out about these videos when they go live. We do shoot a, a video like this live every week. And of course, we're always um, releasing new videos on things like installation, product knowledge stuff, all sorts of meta related stuff that we think you'll enjoy. So thanks for your attention. My name's Keith Tanner, and we'll see you again soon.